10 things to know before you go to Macau. I'm Chris, this is Topher. This is Yellow Productions. We do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This is part of our series on Hong Kong and the areas around. If you want to see more information about Hong Kong, find links in the description below or at the end of this video. Even more videos on Macau too. But so let's talk about Macau, some general information first. Macau uh, has been a Portuguese colony. It was for about 400 years from the 1500s until 1999, which now it's a special administrative region of China. Macau, it's very small. It is like 11 square miles, but 600 140,000 people live here. Every year though, the 2017, 30 million visitors came to visit Macau, most of them from mainland China. Macau is famous for two things. One, the old Portuguese square being this old Portuguese colony. That's one of the major reasons to come here also for gambling. This is the only place in China where gambling is legal. And so the visitors from China who come here, they primarily come to gamble. In fact, gambling is so popular in Macau that the gambling in the casinos in Macau has generated seven times what the Las Vegas Strip generates in gambling revenue. That's pretty crazy. If you're coming from Hong Kong, it's definitely worth a day trip, maybe even an overnight trip if you want to spend some time in Koh Tai. We'll talk about getting in in a moment, but you should know Macau has like four areas. There's the Macau Peninsula, which has kind of the main Portuguese village here with the ruins of St. Paul. Going down south, there's Taipa, the Koh Tai Strip, where the casinos are, and then all the end is Kolowan. Before you go to Macau, you'll need to know about getting into Macau. Chances are the way you'll be getting into Macau is via a ferry. I'm standing at one of the Macau ferry terminals. There are two ferry terminals in Macau, this main one here, and then there's a second one in Taipa, which is more convenient if you're going to the Koh Tai Strip. Most people come from Hong Kong and come to Macau as a day trip. There are four ferry terminals in Hong Kong and two ferry operators, Turbojet, the red one, and the Koh Tai water jet, the blue one. They offer pretty similar services. It takes about an hour from Hong Kong or either way. Uh, and I'll recommend if you get prone to seasickness or motion sickness, you might want to buy a ticket for the upper deck. It's about twice the price of the lower deck, but it moves a lot less. Uh, there are a couple other options to come into Macau. You can fly. There is an airport. You can cross the border from China by land or you can take helicopters from Hong Kong. It's only 15 minutes by helicopter. Before you go to Macau, you need to know about getting around Macau. And so there's basically three options for getting around Macau. Well, four if you count your feet. You can certainly walk. But of those three, there's taxis. There are a lot of taxis in Macau. When you come into the ferry stations, there will be taxi drivers waiting there. Uh, there's buses. Uh, Macau operates a public bus that runs around. The service is pretty good, but third, Something you should get familiar with are the free shuttles that the hotels provide, like the Venetian, the Sands, a lot of these provide these free shuttles. And so if that's going where you want to go learn to use the free shuttles, I'll point out no rideshare companies operate here, Uber, Lyft, Grab, none of those things are available in Macau. Uh, so if you're looking for a taxi, there might be a bit of a wait. We've experienced some wait while we're waiting in a casino for a taxi. If you come into the ferry terminals, you'll see there will be a lot of people offering like tours and things like that to take you around. You know, they'll offer and come up to you for taxis. Take the official ones out of the official taxi rank um, and they'll charge you in Macanese pataka, but they're pretty cheap. We'll talk about currency in a little bit. The fourth thing to know is that the number four is unlucky. The number four in Chinese sounds like death, so you will not see fourth floors in any of these hotel room buildings. So on to number five, speaking of luck, let's talk about casinos. You need to know about casinos before you come to Macau. I mentioned earlier the Koh Tai Strip right here. This is where all the big casino hotels are. The City of Dreams, the Wind, the Venetian, which I'm standing at right now. But you should know if you're going into the casinos here, they're a little bit paranoid, actually ultra paranoid. Going into every single casino here, you will go through metal detectors and they do not allow cameras even to be shown in the casinos. We were walking into a casino and OC girl had a camera around her neck and they said, ah, oh, you gotta put it in the bag before you come into the casino. It's actually gotten a lot better now than it used to be. When I came here 10 years ago, they actually put a sticker over my camera with a no camera sign over it. Really keep your cameras away when you're in the casinos here. In the casino hotels, it's okay to take photos and videos in the common areas, but here at the Venetian, if you go past 
that point with the white screens, then no cameras after that. Before you come to Macau, you need to know about the money, the currency in Macau. It's the Macanese Pataka, M-O-P is how it's abbreviated. And the Macanese Pataka, it's basically equivalent to the Hong Kong dollar. Actually, they'll accept both currencies here, Hong Kong dollars and Macau Patakas. But you might use Macau Patakas, actually you might use Hong Kong dollars and they may give you Macau Patakas in change. The big uh, restaurants, like I said, and the casinos, they'll all take credit cards, but the little places around the Portuguese village, you'll want some money. But probably make sure to spend all your patacas while you're in Macau before you go back to Hong Kong, because they won't know what to do with your Macanese pataca. By the way, the official exchange rate is one Hong Kong dollar is equivalent to 1.03 Macanese pataca, but you'll find many stores have signs that they, they accept it one to one to one. The next thing to know before you go to Macau is about the language. So there's two official languages in Macau. One is Portuguese, being a former Portuguese colony. The second one is Chinese spoken Cantonese. English is not one of the official languages, though they do speak a little bit of English. You'll see everything pretty much signed in Chinese and Portuguese maybe in English. But by the way, the Portuguese, if you've learned Portuguese in school, they have a special dialect here called Macanese Portuguese. Before you go to Macau, you should know about shopping, the best shopping in Macau. It's in the Koh Tai Strip in these big casino hotels. Right now, I'm in the Venetian Grand Canal shops. This is probably my favorite place for shopping in Macau. Why? Well, because you can shop and walk along the Grand Canal and see gondoliers that sing sometimes. She must be tired. The other one is singing right now though. Around um, the Portuguese square, there's a lot of like souvenir shops, things like that. But if you want luxury shopping, Kotai Strip. Something you should know about Macau is that lots of Macau outside of the casinos and the commercial like Portuguese district kind of feel a little empty. Like this is the Fisherman's Wharf shopping mall. It was a very ambitious product project they've like recreated different scenes around the world but walking around here at 1 p.m. on a Monday it it is empty and a lot of the shopping areas in Macau kind of feel that way this one may be in particular because it's just off the beaten casino path but where is everybody they're either seeing the Portuguese sites or they're coming here for intense sessions of gambling yes most of the visitors to Macau come from mainland China and they come almost only to gamble so that's where they'll be when you come to Macau, if all you do is go to the casinos and go to the Portuguese center, you will think that it's either really cute or really ritzy in the whole thing. I would encourage you, if you want to see the real Macau, get off on some of the side streets. Like, take a look at some of these wires. I mean, when this was a Portuguese colony, it feels like it's a little bit of a place that the land time forgot or governing forgot. Um, and it's all within the shadows, take a look up there, of the casinos. That's the Grand Lisboa Casino, and just two blocks from it are these really unpainted apartment buildings. Hmm. To continue your exploration of the real Macau, just there from the shadows of the Casino Lisboa, as you're walking around, make sure to check out the city's churches. This is the ruins of St. Paul. You can't go inside, but most of the city's churches, you still can go inside during daylight hours. But Macau's a really interesting cross between Christianity and Buddhism. And so there's many temples in the city too. Check out the churches and the temples. It's a pretty interesting walk to do the church and temples walk through Macau. Boy, and let me tell you, if you like incense, the smell of incense, the look of incense, or pictures of incense, you will love the inside of some of these temples. So when I said you can't go in this church, I mean, you can go in the ruins. This is the ruins of St. Paul. There used to be a church here. It burned down three times, and that's all that left. That's all that's left. This is the classic site in Macau, the best place to take that Instagram photo, or if you're getting engaged, take your engagement photos here too. Before you go to Macau, you should know about the food. Traditional Macanese food is a fusion between Portuguese food and Cantonese food, dating back over 400 years of history. It is often considered the world's first fusion food. Of course, you'll find a lot of good high-end Chinese food here as well. You'll find those in the casinos. Mm. I'm drinking Hong Kong milk tea. A lot of influence from Hong Kong. 
but definitely when you're in the old city center, the old Portuguese part, check out some of the Portuguese Cantonese fusion restaurants. Something super popular to get in Macau is the pork chop bun. If you're getting this in Portugal, it'd be called the bifana. We've had them in Portugal, so I'm curious how they taste here. There's a bunch of little stalls that sell these. The one we're at, it's called Thai Le Loi Ke, and it's right in front of the ruins of St. Paul. This one's on a regular Portuguese style bun. They can also do it on a croissant right here. Or they can do it on a pineapple bun, which is a Hong Kong specialty. They were sold out of those. So let's give this a go. Mm. Mm. They're pretty good. Mm. It's a thin slice of pork chop. The pork chop is lightly breaded. It's a nice fluffy bun. It's hot. Pretty delicious. A good afternoon pick-me-up around a bunch of super touristy things around St. Paul's. Check this place out. When you come to Macau, you need to get an egg tart, or known as a nata, pastel de nata. It's just a Portuguese colony after all, and these are Portuguese egg tarts. If you've been to dim sum restaurants in Hong Kong or dim sum restaurants in the world, you will see egg tarts, sometimes referred to as don tart, egg tart. But, they came from here. They came from Macau. This is what popularized it. There's two stores that made it popular. Lord Stow's is the original. And right now I'm at Margaret's Cafe Inata. Husband and wife team. The wife runs this store now. And you get these egg tarts. They're hot. They're fried a long line. This is a busy popular place. Don't come on Wednesdays because they're closed on Wednesdays. And you can mm, get a fresh flaky egg tart out in the street. Mm see how flaky it is it's fresh and if you have egg tarts that aren't fresh they kind of all stick together but mm, a hot fresh one mm, kind of tastes like an egg custard in a crispy croissant it's definitely worth your time and the way we only waited mm, five or seven minutes in line but just know how many you want to order when you get to the front they really want to keep that line moving ten Hong Kong dollars or Macau Pataka each which is about $1.25 US. To taste some of the original, original egg tarts in Macau, visit Lord Stow's Bakery. It's right there. That's the original location. We are not there. We are at the Venetian Hotel where they have a location with the egg tarts. These cost a little more than at the other place. These are 12 Macau patakas. There's Lord Stow right there. He looks like a pretty friendly guy, doesn't he? A lot of egg tarts. So, give these a try, see how these compare. Warm, buttery, flaky. I feel like this one might be a little bit more buttery than the other one. And it's a little warmer. But if you blindfolded me and gave me a taste test, I'm not sure that I could tell the difference. I will give Lord Styles a plus because the location's nicer. And if you take a look over there, it's in the Venetian and you can actually see the Venetian shops off in the distance. A little bit nicer than that middle of Macau weird apartment complex eating area. Before you go to Macau, you should know about spitting because many of the visitors will be here from mainland China. You will hear a regular <laughs> You might hear that right here into your neck. You might see that into a trash can. But if you're, it's a sound you'll hear quite a bit because they're just spitting. It's okay, it happens all the time in Macau. In Hong Kong, they're not too happy if you do that on the street, but you'll hear it here. And the last thing to know is that we've got more videos. If you're coming to Macau or Hong Kong, you'll find links in the description below, or you can click this one or this one to watch some more of our videos from this series. Are you, are you still rolling? Are you still rolling? I think we're done, we're done.